In 1577, Thomas Field, an Irish missionary, arrived in Brazil's Sao Paulo. The first Irish colony followed in 1612, at the mouth of the Amazon River. But, since just before the turn of the millennium, following meat factory closures in Brazil, the traffic has been going the other way. Brazilians are among the fastest growing non-Irish national communities in the country, with Gorton County Galway, boasting an almost 30% Brazilian population. Among this wave of arrivals 10 years ago was Kika Shix. Ireland was one of the countries that I could work and study at the same time. But when I got here, I just thought that uh, I felt like I was in a movie with all the buildings, the streets, the people speaking English. I always feel, I still feeling that I'm in a movie here. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> in other ways, however, Kika found Ireland to be a long way from the movies. Where she came from in Sao Paulo was perhaps a tad warmer. The difficult thing was the weather. So windy, like not many sunny days. And the good things um, are the people, because I love them. <laughs> in fact, Kika's love of the Irish plays a big part in why her one year trip to study dance and improve her English became one of those life-changing decisions. I, I got a bike when I got here and I love cycling. And then one of the nights I was cycling and I bumped into a man. And uh, this man was very kind. And um, me as being Brazilian, I just asked for his phone number and asked him to get my phone number. And then we started seeing each other and um, we're married now. <laughs> Brazil is a long way from Ireland, but family is at the centre of Brazilian life, and Kika doesn't let the distance change that. My family in Brazil, it's, it's, small, it's a small family, but we are very strong together. So I have like a really close relationship with my mom, and I'm always talking to her every day, and my brother as well. And then uh, here in Ireland, I have a lovely family as well, which is my husband's family, which is my family too. And uh, they are very um, nice with me. They always make me feel welcome. Um, my mom-in-law, she's lovely, love her. It's not only her Brazilian family that Kika misses. I really miss the fruits, fresh fruits. So for example, um, papaya, pineapple, watermelon. Fruits are the most difficult to get. And even when I get like um, some of the fruits like um, mamão papaya, they're not good really, because like they could be like looking great from outside, but inside they're still green. It seems that Brazil is a treasure trove for the taste buds. But what about Ireland? Is there anything that Kika has found to her liking here? The man? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the potatoes. <laughs> Again. The fish, the fresh fish that you, we can get. In the Indian shop, it's good because I can find also a Brazilian uh, ingredients there. The Brazilian community is very big here in Ireland. We tend to help each other. It's this Irish-Brazilian community that has set the Romancing Ireland challenge that Kika is being asked to accept. I'm going to take on the Romancing Ireland challenge, cooking the carne de sol com mandioquinha using only Irish ingredients. This dish is not from Kika's region, so she looks at the recipe to size up the challenge. So there is 500 grams of carne de sol, which is a beef, sun beef, there is no sun, um, 300 milliliters of oil, uh, três dentes de alho cortados em lâminas, so I forgot the name of that in English. Ah. And then mandioca, so 300 grams of mandioca. 
which we don't have it here. The closest one would be the parsnip, maybe. That's just the only one that I can think of that it's close because of the color. But now the taste, it's not the same, really. However, it isn't with an alternative for the manjoca that Kika starts her hunt for Irish ingredients. Carne is the Portuguese word for beef. And the Brazilians are world famous for the quality of theirs. But so are the Irish. Kika walks to the nearby Swan Center in Rathmines, where she is sure that her local butcher can help. Hi, how are you? Hi, Mike, how are you? Good, good. So I need to get a beef, and it's a part of the call that I don't really know exactly how it would be in English. Yours. Um, in Portuguese, it's called colchão mole. It's a beef cut? Yes. OK, perfect. Yes, it is. Um, I have a picture of what oh, yeah, part brilliant. of the call is it. So. Yes, OK, top side. Perfect. I have that here. Do you? Yeah, of course. So, How many people are you looking to feed? So I would be cooking for around four people. Four people? Yeah. And you, is it a roast or are you going to fry the beef? So I have to cure. OK, yeah. So basically I have to add all the salt, leave there for around 48 hours. OK. After that, I have to put in the water, cover with the water, let the salt get out. Yes. And then change that water every around six hours. OK, yeah. And then after, I'm going to fry it um, with oil or butter. Perfect. That sounds I'll get a top side and I'll cut it for you. Perfect. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> nice piece. I think you've, it's very lean inside, but you have the covering of fat, so that's where the flavor is. Okay. So don't take the fat off. Okay. The beef will be more tender in Ireland because it's a younger animal. In Brazil, it may be a little bit older, so you'd see the fat will be probably thicker and slightly more yellow in Brazil. Oh, wow. But that's just a, it's a big thing in Ireland is we pride ourselves on our beef. In Brazil, the carne de sol is cured in the sun to take out some of the moisture. That is simply not a runner in the wet and cloudy Irish weather. The alternative is to pack Mark's cut of beef in salt and leave it to cure in this way. But, like all of the other ingredients, the salt must be Irish. As an island nation, that's not a problem. We've been making salt in Ireland for thousands of years, but in this part of the world, it goes back even longer. Yeah. And uh, we, Oriel, sort of, we picked this place because of the, the beautiful water, the, 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 the quality of the water and the history that's behind it. And we do salt a little bit different to everybody else. So everyone else takes the salt and they harvest it in open air and over either in salt plains or boil it, whereas we do it in a seal system. Um, okay. And what that means is from when it leaves the ocean floor to when it comes out as, as salt, it never touches the air, which gives it an intensity and it, gives it, it means it has more minerals. So it's, it's, it's a purer natural sea salt, which I think would be just perfect for your dish because it's, it's, it's a very fine grain. As you can see, it's, it's, it's not like big flakes or crystals. So it, it, it's, it's a real ingredient, sea salt, or for, for baking and curing, it's, it's fantastic. And, um, you know, we, I, I think this would really work well on beef because we've done th different things with chefs on, on beef before and it's always worked out really well. But you have to taste this because it is really, it's, it's got a... Mm. Mm. It's really nice. And it lasts on the tongue, nice, it lasts yeah. for a while. You know, it doesn't go mm. away. And, um, and the other thing we've done is, we actually have something which we think you might really like. Um, we, we went to a teeling whiskey company here and we asked them for one of their barrels and we, we got the barrel and we chipped it up and we, we smoked our sea salt over their whiskey barrel. Wow. And we created this whiskey smoked sea salt. So this is our teeling whiskey smoked sea salt. Okay. So you, there's two elements to this. One is the smell. There's just incredible smokiness. And then the flavor mm. is just, it's addictive. It really Ooh. is. Can it's, really um, smell. Mm, that real smokiness. But this, the flavor is just wow. Wow. I think this will make a really wow. special dish. Um, ah, I love this. Yeah. You can really taste like that, that the smokiness. Smoke. I think mm -hmm. it would do something really cool to your beef. Oriel Sea Salt, at its unique County Louth location, is doing something really cool to more than just Kika's beef. 
our salt's a little bit different. It's a very fine grain. So most of, most, when people think of sea salt, they think of, the, of flakes and crystals and grinding. Um, uh, the way we do our process, we, we don't yet do a flake. We do this fine grain. So 98% of our business actually goes to food producers, working with um, small food producers, large food producers, you know, whatever. But because we give them a salt that they can use like other salts, but they can use less and they get this real dynamic change of taste. Um, so companies like O'Donnell's Crisps, um, Clarehead Sea Salt Crisps in Dunn stores, uh, Blanco Nino Tortillas, they used to buy their, their sea salt from Mexico and you know, now they buy it from Ireland and from us. So lots of people doing lots of different things. So we're, all, we're always learning from them because you know, people come to say, will it work in this? And we go, well, does salt work in it? And go, yeah, well, then it should work. So I mean, everything from preserves to butters like Glenillum butters and uh, it, 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 it goes wherever it goes. Well, where it's going now is to Dublin, where Kika will use it to cure the beef she got from Mark, at Dowling's Butchers. This has to be done a few days ahead of the meal, so Kika's wasting no time. So today is Thursday, so I am preparing, uh, start preparing for the meal on Saturday, uh, because it takes a few days in advance to do that. Um, so a kind of just saw. Uh, back in Brazil, back in the old times, they used to actually dry the meat in the sun. Well, because we don't have the sun here in Ireland, um, we have adapted the recipe and we're gonna do that in the fridge. So we're gonna be using the Oriel salt that I collected the other day. So my idea is to do half and a half. So half we're gonna use the normal sea salt and then the other half we're gonna be using the smoke it smoked whiskey so the tealings whiskey um, salt which i think this is gonna be super amazing now it's time to get busy with the beef and straight away kika has questions about preparing it she does the sensible thing oi oi ma tudo bem tudo bem oh ma eu tenho uma dúvida it doesn't take her mother long to sort out the queries but, not taking any chances, Kika keeps her on the line, while she cuts the meat into two halves, one for whiskey salt, and one for ordinary. Corta a carne no meio, só assim. No meio aqui, assim, ou aqui assim, ó? De, de, dessa maneira aqui. Yes. Tá bom. Obrigada. <laughs> so, I don't think I actually ever got this size meat in my life. I don't know if I want to touch them. <laughs> Kika overcomes her squeamishness and soon has the meat curing nicely. She's determined, however, to serve up a fresh fruit dessert, along with the carne de sol, to her guests on Saturday. And for this, she turns to the one Irish fruit that compares favorably to the rich fruits of Brazil, strawberries. I'm over 60 years in this business, which has uh, been a, it's a good business and it's a business it's a healthy product we're growing, it's local, it's, 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 it, it takes all the boxes, you, you, and it's so, it's so fresh. I started with tendrils 30 feet long when I was going to national school. And today, to fast forward today, we're growing 75 acres. All, as you see, oil level and tabletops, all on the cover, all computer fed, the feed. You know, so as you can see here, you don't see any dampness, you see no water. A lot of people would think strawberries like high temperatures, actually that's not the case at all. They like heat, but they like heat that you're comfortable with. And the fact we're that bit close to these coasts, you always have even see today where you're we're here, there's a nice breeze, which gives you a lovely environment for growing the fruit. You can see the fruit here going, going indoors. No wind gets near it, no rain. And we're, we're, we're never depend on the weather, you're in out of the weather, you're totally co controlled. It's been good to us and uh, we enjoy it and we have great passion even to this day. In the early years, people probably only maybe used fruit once or twice a week. 
I say today they use it for every meal. Volumes every year, sales is going up. And, and I can see why, because it, 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 it's just a, it's a fabulous product, you know. On our farm shop, if you come here any day, you'll see our strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, smoothies, jams, the range of jams, no sugar jams as well, and the blueberry juice. Everything in the shop we have is produced on the farm. We don't buy any other products. So for the season's over, then the shop closes for, for the winter. And uh, it couldn't be any fresher. It sounds like exactly what Kika needs. And Pat is happy to show her his mouth-watering strawberries. He's justifiably confident that they will fit the bill. Here in Ireland, you do so well, the strawberries, the blueberries, and I have to do this dessert, and which I'm going to be using the Irish um, ingredients. And um, the strawberry is the main one. Great. Strawberries are a super fruit. It's a very healthy product, you know. Mm. Uh, it, it's fresh, it's local, there's no air miles, so it ticks all the boxes. You can see the lovely environment they're growing in. Nice and cool, well ventilated, plants so clean, so healthy. So That's now so I, I'm going to show you how, how we pick the strawberries on our farm. Okay. All, all our strawberries is always all stem picked, which is very important. Okay. And why I say that is that you don't bruise the fruit. Okay. So, so if you see, the, the way I pick the fruit, that's the way I pick it. Magic. Do you know? See that? Okay. Will you try? You try it. So... And I can tell you, they will make a lovely dessert. Oh my god. <laughs> it's magic the way you do it. <laughs> see, we, we, we have them here. Do, do it with both hands, you see. I got it. No. If you look at that there, now, that's what I would call a perfect pound of strawberries. Did you taste it? Taste it first, want okay. to see what you think. Thank you. Mm, they are perfect. So beautiful. Mmm. Mmm. So fresh. A little while and a lot of sampled strawberries later. Kika has all that she needs for Saturday's dessert. It's the morning of the meal. Kika's up early to catch the weekly farmer's market in Temple Bar's Meeting House Square. She has a number of ingredients on her shopping list and she hopes to find them here. So today is a big day. I'm going to be cooking for my friends, Amanda and Justin. So Today in the morning, I took the meat out of the fridge and then I put that in a, in a bowl with water just to dissolve. So I'm looking to get some parsnip. So the parsnip uh, to replace the mandioca. So um, the parsnip, I think, is kind of in the same family as the vegetable of the mandioca. So hopefully I can find some fresh and organic here today. And uh, for the dessert, I'm going to be making um, Romeo and Juliet. And then I'm looking for a cheese. If, so usually it's the white fresh cheese that we use in Brazil. So hopefully I can find something that's similar. Um, so wish me luck. Kika heads straight for the organic produce from McNally's farm. Then she goes to the Corleggi cheese stand, a paradise for cheese lovers, where she hopes to find an Irish alternative to the Brazilian soft cheese, usually used in the dessert. Okay, um, so maybe yeah, I think I'm gonna try. Um, actually, can I try that? Which one is that one? This. Which one this is that? This is our main cheese. This is the Corleggi cheese. Okay, can I this try is that the one? Goat's milk cheese. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm. I get this one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm um, just after getting um, the cheese, one cheese, I don't know, we'll see how that's going to turn out. And um, I also got some tomatoes and some salad just to do the starter. And uh, I couldn't find a parsley, so I'm going to go to a different shop to try and get that. Kika has no problems finding Irish parsnips in her local supermarket. 
The afternoon finds her back in the kitchen, ready to begin preparing her romancing island challenge meal of carne de sol, com manjoca. She's seen her mother prepare it back home in Brazil, but now she's flying solo, and the pressure's on. So this morning I took the, the beef from the fridge, and then I added water, uh, just removed the salt. So this one is the Irish whiskey salt, and this is just the normal wh white salt. This morning as well, I removed, like every two hours more or less, I removed and I changed the water. So I'm going to do this again while I'm preparing the other part of the meal. With the meat undergoing its final rinse, Kika sets up the rest of the ingredients for her meal. So here I am. Um, my friends, they should be here in probably around two hours, so I have to have the meal ready for that. And I will be doing as well a dessert, which is called Romeo and Juliet, which is made of guava, uh, the fruit from Brazil. And also uh, we eat with the fresh cheese. Um, so to replace the guava, I'm going to be using the strawberries. The strawberries are so beautiful and so good. So to make the dessert, I would need sugar but we don't have the sugar here in Ireland, we don't produce sugar in Ireland and as Clarks they actually make some uh, strawberry jam which is without sugar so then I'm gonna put this, this on the fridge so then I have like a more strong consistency and I will serve that dessert with the cheese so in Brazil, we, we would use the cheese as a fresh cheese from Coles, but um, this is actually goat cheese. So because we have like so much goat cheese that are actually delicious here in Ireland, I just decided to go for it instead of using the cow cheese. I have also some onions that I'm going to be doing with butter and adding, and I'm going to be frying the, the beef. And that's it, let's do it. From this point on, Kika is a whirlwind of activity as the time counts down to the arrival of her guests. So I have chopped the, the beef and I have one with the Irish uh, whiskey salt and another one with just normal salt. I have here the new Grange rapeseed oil. I'm gonna fry with those. So I'm gonna try to do both at the same time. We'll see how that's gonna turn. It looks like it's turning out just fine. Kika also fries onions in butter and boils the chopped parsnips, which she then adds to the fried beef. With the guests seated at the table, waiting to pass judgment on her romancing island challenge, all that is left to do is plate up and await the verdict. I'm serving the dish. So this first dish here, it's with the sea salt. Okay. And then we have the second one. And the second one was done with the whiskey salt. Nice. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Whiskey salt sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good in general. So sounds here we go. Delicious yeah, and please. Nice. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kika is about to find out if she has been successful in creating a fully Irish version of carne de sol com manjoca, the dish that was voted by the Brazilian community. Okay, so which one do you want to try first? The, the sea salt, yeah. Sea salt. And is it just normal sea salt, just like that you buy in the shop or what? Yeah. This is a sea salt, yeah, made here in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, I, I think actually, actually in, in Brazil we dry the meat also with like normal salt or like sea salt mm -hmm. max like the only difference is that we probably just let the the meat dry like days oh, on the wow. sun like yeah I don't know how much do you want do you want yeah it's fine yeah, yeah great yeah uh, Justin I would love to whiskey whiskey <laughs> salt of yeah. course okay. <laughs> and that's also Irish whiskey salt with Irish whiskey as well. Yes, it is. <laughs> Great. Yes, it is with uh, Tilling's uh, whiskey. Ah. I've never drilled so much in my no. <laughs> As the only Brazilian guest, Amanda is the real judge of the dish. And first impressions are promising. 
Well, the texture of the meat is very <coughs> similar of the dry meat that you have in Brazil, so. Carne de sol. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good. Is mm -hmm. it? Actually, the taste is very similar. I'm surprised, actually. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the taste... <laughs> no, because... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, because in Brazil, we really like the, the dry meat. It takes ages, like kind of days in the sun. Mm. And when it, like we did, like not for days, right? Of course, you put the salt and everything, but the taste is just the same. Mm-hmm. Mm. What about parsley? Very nice. Oh, yeah, number. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh my god. I want this every week. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm. You'll cook this for me as well soon? I think about it. <laughs> as a bonus, Kika has made an Irish version of Romeo and Juliet, a Brazilian dessert of soft cheese and guava jelly. Instead, she has used Corleggi goat cheese and Clark's strawberry jam, colorfully garnished with Clark's fresh strawberries. Yeah. Yeah. So Can we again? try? Yes, please. Try. Are you just with do the goat cheese? So it's like. That's the goat cheese. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Palms away. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Yeah, love it. The meal is a success, as Amanda confirms. When Kika told me that she would cook like the kind of sol with mandioca, I was very surprised because it's something that is from the northeast of the country and my dad's from the northeast. So I think it brought me a lot of emotions because it reminded me home and remind like how mandioca is kind of a very culture in Brazil, we just can find there. And then I was also surprised that she could actually get the same taste. So the dessert, I was also kind of excited to see what, what she was like about to, to make because the main one, it's guava, which you can barely find in Ireland. But Kika just like, okay, I'm gonna try to do something similar, but with a different fruit. So I was very curious to see because the texture of the guava uh, sweet, it, it's very different the way that they do. And I never thought that she could do like with strawberries. And then when I saw her like removing from the freezer, I was like, okay, what's happening? <laughs> and then she put like on the top of the cheese, which was really good, even though also the cheese is not the one that we use. But the fat was great. I think the, the combination was really, really nice. And the same, I think when we when we eat, like the feeling, it's associated with emotions, and we like kind of think about friendship and like family and home. So I thought it was really nice. And how was the romancing island experience for Kika? The part that I most enjoyed was uh, going to the producers and then seeing the product and talking to them and uh, just be able to get all the Irish products like, to cook this uh, meal. And as my friends said as well, I think it really tasted, like the meat really tasted, I think like, you know, Brazilian with the mm -hmm. salt, it really brought the, the flavor. It was a great experience, I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, what else? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna turn around to the other side? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much the same. That's going well. It's only a couple of weeks there, that one. We've taken two down to the cafe already. It's okay. a really good production this year. Nice. Yeah. It looks great. I'm, I'm happy I could do that. Okay. If this recipe doesn't work out, don't blame the base. Okay, it tastes like vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. DeclanCassidy.com